Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today we're talking ENFPs versus INFPs. So this is a statistical comparison of the ENFP personality type as opposed to the INFP personality type. Now what's unique about this video is it's based completely on your personality type test results. So this is the average ENFP statistically against the average INFP. How are they different? What do the numbers say? Now what I want to show you is with this statistical breakdown, ENFPs are not as extroverted as the average extrovert. So ENFPs are about 55% extroverted and INFPs about 45% extroverted. That means the ENFPs are more extroverted than INFPs, but since it's a difference of 10%, it can be very hard to know where you are on the scale. Am I in the bottom 50 or am I in the top 50? How do I know the difference? Where does the line go? So it's better instead to look at the cognitive functions. And okay, if we look at the cognitive functions, we already see some big differences here. First things first, ENFPs have stronger extroverted intuition. INFPs have stronger introverted feeling. Now, already it's tricky to tell which one comes first, but it's easier to tell which one comes first than to tell if you are 10% extroverted or 10% introverted. So you can see already that, okay, as an INFP, I value my individuality and my inner values and ethics over my exploration of new ideas and the connecting of patterns and testing new theories in the world around me. So this is the baseline of why INFPs test as introverted and ENFPs test as extroverted. The ENFP inclination to want to learn and discover makes them more extroverted while the inclination of the INFP to protect the self and to discover yourself in your own identity and individual beliefs makes you an INFP. Now if you go more in depth you start looking at these numbers first thing interesting you'll see is ENFPs tend to underestimate how intuitive they are and score as about 57% intuitive while INFPs tend to underestimate how feeling they are and tend to score as about 42% thinking. So what that means is INFPs score as feeling types, but they don't realize just how feeling they are. And what's the reason for this? It's because they are introverted feeling types. When you're a single feeler type like an INFP, what that means is you identify primarily with your own values and your own identity, but you don't identify with the tribe and the values of other people. This translates to one thing, the feeling that I have strong values and individuality, but I'm not very feeling in the sense that I don't really uh, spend a lot of time engaging the community or tribe around me, and I'm not very good at dealing with interpersonal relationships. I find people draining, and so I feel a bit on the cusp of feeling and thinking. I feel like, yeah, I am very feeling inside and as an individual, but I'm not necessarily a very feeling person through and through. The ENFP personal type has it the other way around. So what you see here is ENFPs are double feeling types. That means ENFPs are people that tend to struggle with dealing with how other people see them in interpersonal relationships and expectations socially compared to their own individual expression and their own need to speak out and be authentic and be true to themselves. So ENFPs tend to relate to both introverted feeling and extroverted feeling. This is a problem because it means you struggle to know which one to follow. Should I be true to myself or should I throw out an olive branch to other people? Should I uh, agree with other people and get along or should I speak out and say what I feel even if it might hurt other people's feelings? This, these are struggles that ENFPs have that INFPs don't have. Now on the other end of this it's intuition. INFPs are double intuitives and ENFPs are single intuitives. That means ENFPs they are primarily focused on their own exploration of opportunities and new ideas and less with the formulation of new concepts or theories or speculative endeavors. That means ENFPs are less interested with designing or coming up with a concept or an idea, while INFPs are a bit torn. INFPs can find themselves drawn to the drawing board of thinking up new concepts and ideas, but also to searching, exploring, testing, and figuring out and learning about things in the world around them. 
INFPs tend to both say they are very curious and very interested in learning new things and seeing things from new perspectives, but also they tend to say, I like to be alone and to formulate my own ideas and to uh, daydream and fantasize and conceptualize. So, in short, INFPs are flow introverted intuitives and auxiliary extroverted intuitives. ENFPs are flow and dominant extroverted intuitives, but only inspirational introverted intuitives. And that means they draw a lot less from introverted intuition than what INFPs do. And on the test, it translates into INFPs thinking they are more intuitive and ENFPs thinking they are more feeling. Now, if you look at it on a cognitive spectrum, here you'll see that INFPs relate a lot more to introverted intuition than ENFPs do. And you'll see as well that ENFPs relate a lot more to extroverted feeling than INFPs do. But what about the other functions, the other shadow functions? First, we have introverted thinking. The average INFP relates as more introverted thinking, the average ENFP as less introverted thinking. So ENFPs tend to overall think that they're not very introverted thinking, while INFPs tend to think that, yeah, I can be a little bit introverted thinking. What that means is it's easier for an INFP to use introverted thinking to solve problems and to deal with life, while for an ENFP it's much more of a stressor. If you look at extroverted sensing, you have otherwise the opposite pattern. So ENFPs on average relate more to extroverted sensing and say they are more open to go out and experience life and to live in the moment, while INFPs are slightly less interested in doing this. And that should all make sense to all of you. Now, if you look at it theoretically, ENFPs are explorers and INFPs are advisors. That means ENFPs are people that are extroverted and perceiving, while INFPs are introverted and perceiving. That means the INFP perceives themselves while the ENFP perceives the world. The ENFP perceives what the world could be, the INFP perceives what the individual could be. So INFPs and ENFPs, they're both looking at and interested in how things appear and what things are and how things can be defined and what things could become. And they see and identify and define things a lot more open-ended. But what they define is very different. The ENFP defines the world around them, the INFP defines themselves. A lot of time I, ENFPs tend to report as struggling to take time to look into themselves. They struggle to sit down and reflect on their decisions and actions in life and what they are doing. They will go through moody phases where they withdraw from the world to look at themselves, but then after that they'll pass on, move on, and move forward, and they'll be so focused on what's next that there is no time to self-reflect. INFPs will miss out on a lot of opportunities and a lot of possibilities because they are so focused on first defining for themselves what they want, and they are going to say, I don't know if I want to make a decision, I don't know if I want to try something out, because I want to make sure it fits with my values first. So here you have it. If you want to figure out you're an ENFP or an INFP, what you first want to look at is, for an ENFP, do I have more extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling? Or for an INFP, do I have more introverted feeling and more introverted intuition? So differentiate. Do I have more extroverted intuition than introverted feeling? Do I have more extroverted feeling than introverted intuition? That's the key to figuring out your personality type. And if you need any help with that, leave a comment down below or become a Patreon at patreon.com slash ericdor. I'm always happy to help and I'm learning a lot from these personality test results. So if you want to send me your results, that's also going to help me a lot. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.